So on December 12th, local elections were held in Saudi Arabia, marking the first time that women were involved in elections either as voters or as candidates, or both as voters and candidates. Over 900 women competed um, for the tw about 2,100 seats in municipal ca uh, councils that are spread across the kingdom. Um, Two-thirds of the seats of these councils, which deal with municipal matters and were recently given um, more power to decision-making uh, over public health, land allocation permits, and planning, were elected, and one-third are appointed uh, by the Municipal Affairs Ministry. And 21 women were elected, including uh, Rasha Hafsi um, from Jeddah, who is joining us here today via Skype. The decision to include uh, women in elections came in the form of royal decree from the uh, former King Abdullah near the start of the previous uh, municipal elections in 2011. But of course, uh, women were involved before that in campaigning for the inclusion of women uh, in the elections. Um, through the Belady campaign, which sought to achieve the full and effective participation of women uh, in the municipal elections through both integration and by raising awareness about the issue. Uh, and Belady was just recently recognized by the European Union with the Shallow Prize for their work in prom promoting human rights. So we congratulate you on that prize. <laughs> The Bellity campaign itself was, of course, built upon many other years of uh, work in women's activism uh, to support women's full participation and empowerment within the kingdom, as well as broader issues of, of human rights and political participation. And of course, we have with us today um, three, really four women who have been really at the forefront of that activism. And so we're thrilled to welcome all of them. Uh, let me go ahead uh, for the panel. Uh, it's going to be sort of a conversation, so I want to go ahead and, and introduce all of the panelists uh, before we start, although uh, many of them, maybe all of them, are well known to you. Uh, Dr. Haltoun Fassi is a professor at Riyadh's King Saud University, as she also teaches at Qatar University, where she writes on women's history, women's issues, and Islamic rights and civil reform. Um, and I can attest that she has a very active research agenda because I just saw her recently at the Middle East Studies Association Conference where she was presenting her research. Um, she is, of course, a longtime campaigner for women's rights in the kingdom and a founder and leading member of the Belady campaign. Uh, Dr. Nela Attar at the end over here is the founder and president of Stasharia Consultancy Office, which is a consultancy firm that is uh, owned and run by women in Jeddah. Um, in 2011, she established another organization to help women start their own businesses. And she is also part of the team that initiated the Belady campaign and served as the organization's uh, coordinator in Jeddah. Um, Dr. Aziza Youssef um, is a retired computer science lecturer, or Aziza Youssef is a retired computer science lecturer from King Saud University in Riyadh. Um, she's an activist involved in various uh, human rights and women's campaigns. And she was also a leading per participant of the campaigns to support uh, the right for women to drive in Saudi Arabia, both the Women to Drive movement in 2011 and the October 26 movement in 2013. And of course, Rasha Hafsi will be uh, joining us. She was a municipal council candidate who was elected in Jeddah's uh, second district. Um, she has run Think and Link, a consultancy firm based in Saudi Arabia that provides opinion polling, youth advancement programs, as well as uh, public awareness campaigns. And she has also been involved in activism since she was 15, founding a number of community organizations working with Islamic charities as well to empower the voices of women and youth in decision making in the kingdom. So we are thrilled to have all of them here with us today. <laughs> Give them your applause. <laughs> So Dr. Hatun, um, we're really excited to have you here. I know it's a really busy uh, and exciting time. Um, you're just coming back from the kingdom where you were observing elections. Can you just give us some of your impressions and also tell us if these elections met the expectations that you had for them? Bismillah uh, ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. First of all, thank you for uh, um, putting this panel uh, across, and uh, uh, thanks to all uh, the audience um, who are um, very clear, interested in knowing what's going on inside Saudi Arabia. 
um, of course, we, uh, we, we live at a moment of, uh, that we consider it as a historical moment, where women for the first time are recognized as full citizens. This is, uh, it's as, as basic as that. Uh, we are given uh, similar rights to men to vote and to stand for, for elections, no matter how, how we assess um, uh, these, uh, these councils or these elections or the, the method in which it, it, it was carried out or uh, the power that is being, uh, will be given to, um, to these councils uh, or not. Um, in all, uh, uh, the, 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 the outcome of all of that is that women are equal to men in terms of uh, exercising their rights um, by entering uh, uh, you know, within the context of, of municipal councils uh, and within also the context of Saudi Arabia, mm -hmm. uh, knowing that Saudi Arabia is not a country that, um, well, it has this reputation, of course, about uh, its uh, specific uh, treatment of women that we are not uh, accepting as well as Saudi women and that we, we just uh, uh, work, uh, especially you have all this panel of, uh, <laughs> of women activists, uh, just to show that Saudi women are actually doing something uh, on the ground and that we are not silent. Coming from there, um, the, the, the feeling uh, surrounding elections were, was kind of um, uh, explosive, I can say, <laughs> of, uh, of enthusiasm and of excitement. Uh, of, uh, uh, I, don't I, would, I, I don't think that there were tears as such, but uh, maybe, maybe in some cases, because you have many candidates who worked very hard on uh, their candidacies and they thought that they deserve it. Um, and you, um, and also you have the group of, uh, of Baladi Initiative who has been uh, on the ground working on this for so many years, for a decade now, uh, whether before it was called Baladi and uh, after it was called Baladi. Uh, we, we are uh, there uh, calling for women's rights since uh, day one, since 2004. So um, the, um, to describe this excitement is, is, um, is not very uh, 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 simple. So it's not that easy, uh, but in general, we say that uh, we at least, at last we fulfilled our goal, mm -hmm. the first level of our goals, of course, but um, um, we could go more, um, uh, more into details about what it really means, but mm -hmm. the main significant again is that we are acknowledged as citizens. Why don't you, um, since you are one of the founders and, and chief activists of the Bellity Campaign, oh, sorry. since you are one of the, the founders of the Bellity Campaign and have been working at this, as you said, since 2004, can you give us a little bit more of the texture of the history of that, um, not only the goals of it, but, but the organization and some of the obstacles that you faced? Uh, okay. We have 10 years to go, but um, <laughs> all right, just put it in brief. Um, from between 2000, 2004, well, okay, since 2004 till today, we, we had three rounds of municipal councils. Uh, first two, uh, were, the first one was uh, 2004, 2005, and the second, 2011, and uh, here we are at the last one. Um, the first one, when it was announced, we uh, considered it, it was announced by the, the uh, Prince Abdullah, it was, he was a crown prince at the time. He said that uh, we were going to start having public p participation uh, for the first time. Um, there wasn't anything that uh, exempted women from participation. So this was our starting point by uh, not claiming, but uh, uh, um, uh, catching on that uh, legal point that when he, he speaks about about uh, citizens, it means men and women, mm -hmm. uh, similarly as the uh, basic law. So we went through um, uh, a campaign that wasn't given a name. It was just women campaign. It was uh, 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 both in Jeddah and in Riyadh, and uh, not both, but also the Eastern Province was part of this. Um, so um, we kind of networked. Um, in um, uh, the way that we could, uh, emailing was something uh, also new. So we used uh, mailing lists and uh, we used the media a lot. We uh, contacted writers of that time. 
to uh, recruit them into writing and into defending, um, checking on every uh, reporter and how he it describes uh, our participation. Because there, were, there, were, there was this assumption from the start that women are not going to participate without uh, giving it a proper uh, legal uh, justification. Mm -hmm. So this was why our, I'm, I'm really happy that many, many law students are here, <laughs> so now we well, can talk about <laughs> law in a, in a different way. At that time, uh, law wasn't even a department at any of our universities. And um, anybody can speak about law about uh, without knowing what it means. Mm -hmm. So, and I don't come from a legal background, but, uh, but uh, anyway, look, working uh, within human Human rights activism and so on. It you learn it's a process. You would say, you would feel that it's um, uh, it's a common sense as well. Anyway, uh, so uh, we worked on, on on this level as well as uh, as another level of um, dealing with the with the um, ministry itself, uh, the head of the. Um, uh, of the general committee for municipal uh, elections, what uh, was uh, the the former minister, which is Dr. Mansour bin Metab, who um, he was very welcoming and all of that, but we didn't manage. There was this uh, fear uh, and uh, timidness, you could say, of uh, no, no, not fear, not timidness. It was it was fear <laughs> that women. <laughs> well, you want to put it. Well, this is the right way were to, to describe the, the way because there was uh, an insistence on refusing to meet with Saudi women. However, on the same time, they will meet with any, with any journalist who's coming from anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. Truly, the, these journalists would come first to us and meet with us, and then they would go to the minister uh, or to the, to the, to the prince, but, um, and then we will have uh, greetings passing back and forth. <laughs> Well, <laughs> we need to meet to, to just to, to show you how many women are dedicated and how we are ready, actually, to be part of this. And we gave many solutions as to how women should participate, something similar to what is going on, to what, what happened today, but we were ready since 2004. And we didn't want this gap to happen. Now we have 10 years of gap that wasn't, I mean, we were start. We could start. We could have started together. So this was the argument um, that, uh, and there wasn't any uh, feeling or uh, any any uh, kind of uh, groups that were um, already having a previous uh, or a, um, pre not prepared, but there wasn't this uh, um, um, anti feeling of women participating in municipal councils. Mm -hmm. the, they were um, uh, just ready to, um, uh, and this is why when once the, um, uh, the, the final word came from, the, from Prince Mansour saying that we were not going to participate, he did not use religion mm -hmm. as an excuse, nor he used tradition. He just said we're not, get, we're, we're not ready. Mm -hmm. So that was, uh, in itself, was uh, a success as uh, in its first part. And I took it. Um, uh, I took it as a, and we took it as a, um, as a uh, good gesture, as well as a uh, request to please remind us of getting ready. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we kept on reminding them. You know, me as a, as a myself as a, as a writer, uh, Naila also as a, as a columnist. So we used our our writing our because writing is actually the only kind of the only venue, the only podium that we have, you know, in, in which uh, we could use for, uh, for for passing our ideas or activism or opinion. This is the public sphere that we have. Mm -hmm. We don't have anything else. So we used it very extensively. And my articles get tra even translated into Arab news, into English, so that was good exposure. Um, and we carried on, and then in 2008 I reminded them, 2009 I reminded <laughs> them, and then they postponed it altogether to 2011. <laughs> All right, 2011. But by 2010, we had another group, another, uh, another uh, personality who, uh, who came into uh, the scene and wanted to revive the, the rec d demand, which is uh, Ms. Fauzi al Hani. Mm -hmm. who is uh, an activist, social activist uh, from the Eastern Province. She came to me together with uh, 
uh, with uh, uh, Nasima Asada, one of the candidates uh, who was actually uh, denied the candidacy in, 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 in Qatif. Um, there's a space here. <laughs> um, who, um, uh, so, so um, yes, yeah, so, so they came to me and, uh, and asked for, um, to revive the thing and to, to pre get ready for 2011. Mm -hmm. um, I put her in touch with uh, some of the contacts that we, could, we, we formed in 2004 and five, and that was actually the starting point of Hamlet Baladi, mm -hmm. Baladi campaign. And uh, she went personally to visit, to make um, uh, uh, regional visits to Jeddah, Mecca. Uh, she came, as I said, to Riyadh, to Jizan, to Najran. She was a very dedicated uh, person uh, who took care, actually, of the Baladi campaign between 2010 and 2014, and then she handed it to me. Um, so we're having kind of, of internal election kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and. Uh, in, in 2010, we started, we had a strategy, a strategy uh, plan um, where we all met in, uh, in Safwa, in Eastern Province, uh, a group from uh, different cities. That was the starting point. Jizan, uh, Mecca, Jeddah, Medina, Riyadh, and Eastern Province, mm -hmm. um, Qasim. Yeah, that was the starting point. Now we are actually in 16 cities. 16 cities. Yes. So it's, um, yeah, we're um, expanding, expanding, <laughs> <laughs> expanding. So um, uh, that was to prepare everything for 2011. We are coming with, but within uh, or through uh, a prepared foundation. With the strategy, we had a mission and vision and all those uh, uh, administrative uh, um, structure. Um, and uh, we started to form these groups in, in these cities. Uh, we had coordinators in different places. Uh, so we started uh, to form something from nothing. And um, you need to also to bear in mind that Saudi Arabia doesn't have a civil society uh, structure that is uh, permissible. Mm -hmm. um, so we were working on uh, what? Illegally. <laughs> What was the kind response? <laughs> what was the response of the government to your organization in uh, many of these different cities? Because, well, as you say, it is very difficult in Saudi Arabia. Actually, to we do these we things. passed this information uh, little by little. So I, the the minute we decided to uh, to to launch it in two thousand, I think April, two thousand ten, I wrote a uh, an article and I said that. But it, at that time in two thousand ten there was a trend that was starting to spread in Saudi, which is the trend of campaigns. Mm -hmm. uh, and you would consider it as a... As a, as a yeah, they are considered all voluntary uh, kind of, uh, of groups, um, a campaign of, um, and then the driving, but the campaign <laughs> of... <laughs> yeah, especially the, the, the floods of Jeddah was... Uh, so you had this kind of campaign that will uh, get people together. So there wasn't uh, an anti-feeling to it, mm -hmm. uh, as if the state recognizes that they didn't, they needed some kind of uh, platform. And we didn't, uh, we were very careful not to even to, also to anti antagonize anybody. Mm -hmm. uh, it was until 2011 when, when actually the elections were planned and the timeline was given. It was then when we had to do something about it. Uh, we wrote, of course, letters to everybody. Mm -hmm. Letters to, well, the these, these are the, <laughs> the official channels. Huh? Mm -hmm. They kept on asking us to follow the official channels. Official channels were writing to everybody uh, who is uh, in charge. So and the were these letter writing campaigns where everybody would write or on the name of the organization? Or? In the name of the organization, yes. So we wrote it to, uh, to the minister and to the, all the heads of, of municipal councils at that time, and the uh, and then the king. When they <laughs> didn't answer, that we went to the king. Uh, the minister he he sent it to the sec uh, female section, and we met with them. But they didn't really. There wasn't anything that we wanted something uh, in, in uh, to put in plan so that we will be included in the 2011 elections. This mm -hmm. was our actually demand. Mm -hmm. um, so we didn't get anywhere with all of that. But uh, we went through the media pressure. 
and again, uh, writing uh, the, 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 the foreign media as well came, uh, stepped into that, especially when, when the, uh, when the uh, timeline of the, the municipal councils or the elections uh, was announced. And also that, that period, we need to remember that we were talking about 2011 Arab Spring. Mm -hmm. um, so Did you find the international media was helpful <coughs> in your campaign? They, were, they, they wanted to help and to do everything that they could. And we were very careful, of course, of using it because you don't you don't want to backfire on yourself. Uh, every time you you use for the media, they w you could be um, um, in things could be in misinterpreted uh, that you are betrayed. Asian. Ah. <laughs> immediately. <laughs> betrayed. immediately, you're an agent, or you are yeah. the visitor of the amb 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 embassies, mm -hmm. and you are uh, well betrayed. Name it, and, betrayed. Uh, and then yeah. Yeah, the the ah. betrayal of the country. And uh, and then we, the first day of registration came, and hmm. women went all over Saudi Arabia. Well, I mean, our our groups they went to the registration offices in groups mm -hmm. with the media. So the that media. was with yeah. the media. So uh, in Jeddah, Naila with a, with with a group of hers, they went with Al Hayat, I think, and Al Arabi, and many yes. uh, anybody was was invited. Mm -hmm. uh, in uh, the eastern province, also that happened in Riyadh. They they didn't get. Uh, I mean, it was the most you know uh, difficult uh, area. But the happening. following day, the following day, interestingly, another group, who was called uh, the Revolution, yeah. uh, uh, the the Women Revolution. Fabulous. Saudi Human Revolution. Mm -hmm. They had about 11 of them or 12, and they went mm -hmm. out. So it was, uh, we said, OK, uh, we're having Mecca mm -hmm. was interesting, because they went, and they had some banners, and they were arrested, and they Incredible had to, banners. they were uh, uh, interrogated. And then our, our coordinator there, uh, OK, I want, these are like Question. secretive things. <laughs> <laughs> She well, she told them that she doesn't didn't know that it's not allowed to to hold a banner, mm -hmm. and it was true. We didn't know, so there wasn't anything in writing saying <laughs> that you you can't hold a banner. <laughs> so that but it was um, that was a very uh, a very uh, unprecedented moment mm -hmm. when we were actually we went to the streets. It is similar to what happened later with the driving when women took the wheel and drove. Mm -hmm. You see, it was. Like we were breaking many of these um, fear taboos yes. mm -hmm. uh, that uh, uh, that didn't work. Of, of course, you had different reactions from different um, posts in different cities. Uh, some they would welcome and come, and they allowed some photos. And some uh, they called the police, and some they called even the religious police. Mm -hmm. So you had. <laughs> Um, depends on how they felt about having group of women coming and forcing themselves into the uh, registration post. Mm -hmm. um, and then we took it to took the ministry to court. Mm -hmm. <coughs> that was very good with uh, Fawzi mm -hmm. Alhani. Samar Badawi also did it, uh, but Samar wasn't with us. She did it independently. But uh, um, Fawzi Alhani took the ministry. And it was uh, the whole trial. It went from uh, from Qatif it, uh, from the Mam. It went to to Riyadh, and uh, it uh, it got um, developed there. And so uh, an agent from the ministry had to go. And actually, when we went later on, uh, Fozi and I to meet with the um, with the ministry, <laughs> and, uh, and these women said when they well, the minute they saw Fozi, oh, you're the one who took us to court. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, uh, and and uh, just sooner after that, mm -hmm. the king announced uh, uh, his uh, granting us uh, mm -hmm. uh, not only uh, entering shura, uh, municipal councils as voters as well as candidates, but also the shura council. So it was a big victory, I could say. Um, Although the, the, the movement of driving was really hot at that time with Manal Sharif, but nothing was said about driving. But uh, anyway, we, we said, OK, we're, we're, we believe in this step-by-step uh, -step kind of thing. It's all right. And that was another starting point for us to becoming legal, kind of the quest for municipal councils becoming legal. And um, um, not only that, what happened after that was uh, interesting in the fact that we started to have partners with mm -hmm. us. 
and uh, here comes the partnership with the uh, Institute, Arab Institute of Urban Development and uh, uh, Al Walid uh, Institute for uh, Foundation for uh, uh, Philanthropies, <coughs> who supported us into um, into into go, do, doing workshops across the country mm -hmm. in in a program that is called Sharika One uh -huh. and then Sharika Two as well. I'll leave perhaps, I'll leave part yeah. of this to to Nila. I was just going to say perhaps I can bring uh, Dr. Naila here because I understand Dr. Naila that you were in charge of the awareness campaigns uh, within Baladi. Uh, uh, maybe you can tell us a little bit about that work. Yes, uh, I, uh, th in that time I was charged in the program. I was the head of the program uh, department in Baladi. And uh, uh, we didn't want people from outside come and uh, give us a program uh, about election and awareness, about campaign and uh, 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 municipality consult from their point of view. Uh, we discussed that, that we want it from Saudi point of view because we are different than other countries. So uh, we make a team, training a team, and uh, we make a, a brainstorming, and uh, then uh, we start the program, and we just wrote what the program uh, should uh, contain. And all that ladies in that team, they are uh, uh, professional in training and programming. So uh, we sent the request to the uh, Akar uh, Training Center in Lebanon, and uh, we discussed with them what we need, actually. And then they designed the program as uh, needed. And uh, then uh, we start the program in Jeddah and Riyadh, and, th uh, and uh, we actually re repeated 13 times. In that time, even though we are not legally organized, uh, you know, we don't have any, any license to work. But then people like to work with us. And, uh, and uh, NGOs, uh, they offer us uh, like a place to do the training. Uh, they, uh, they, they like what we are doing, but they, c they are afraid that there is, will be some question because we are not legal. Then we have this kind of not not know, knowing what to do. We, ha we said how many times you want to be legal, but we cannot because there is no uh, rules or uh, no laws about uh, civil society. Uh, then we start that, uh, com that program, Sharika, for one year, whole, uh, 2013. It's uh, about uh, uh, awareness, what is uh, uh, election, why, the uh, municipality, why we choose municipality. And in this point, I want just mention that election, it's not new. Women, I mean women participating in election. Uh, women uh, had uh, participated in election in uh, NGOs, in uh, 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 education uh, uh, committees, and uh, in uh, uh, chamber of commerce. So uh, women actually, did participate in election, but not as big as municipality election, uh, which is cover all the kingdom. Uh, so, but the culture of election, it wasn't understandable for men and women, not even women, even for men. So I think uh, the lay, the, what happened for women to participate in election, not from 2004, it was a chance for women to understand it more than men. When, when they entered, they didn't know what exactly. They just want to be there. So about the program, it covered almost uh, 10 uh, cities and uh, was uh, um, 300 ladies participate. Uh, we have almost uh, like uh, 30 ladies from the participated. Uh, they entered the election. <coughs> Unfortunately, only one win, which is Russia. Russia, she's a member, uh, Baladi member in Jeddah. And uh, actually, um, uh, we learn how to work as a group, not uh, for individual, no. If we want one to win, you, we have to uh, vote for this lady, and not her only, the other lady who went in Jeddah, but in another district, we support her by uh, uh, emails, by uh, Facebook uh, account, by Twitter, 
we are asking the people who live in her district, men and women, actually, not only women, because uh, unfortunately the women participating in elections still low number uh, comparing to men. So that's about the program. Can you tell uh, a little bit, because I understand that as part of the, uh, the Belladi um, gender organization, even prior to the campaigns for elections, had gained access to the municipal councils and yes. was actually studying their work. Can you tell me a little bit about um, how you achieved that and what you learned from, from working with the municipal councils? Yes. Uh, actually, after the announcement, uh, the kingdom announcement that the women uh, will uh, enter the election uh, next uh, period, uh, we start to communicate with the uh, municipality. Uh, they have this uh, advertisement all around the city. And they said, uh, be the decision maker and join us in the municipality. And the, this advertisement was this uh, message for the citizen. And they didn't say men or women. So uh, we decide as Baladi group, we have to uh, go there to the municipality and attending the meeting. They make monthly meeting for the citizen. And we didn't know about it before, but then we know it, so we will try to get there. First time we went there, they were afraid. And they said, no, you cannot, it's not, uh, it's against the law. They said, it's <laughs> against the law. Okay, I said, it's no problem. Law. Yeah, it's law. I said, show me the law. <laughs> if I saw the law, I will uh, obey the law. And, uh, and unfortunately, the, the head of the municipality that time, he was a friend of mine. He's a teacher, he's a professor in the, in the university. <laughs> And he said, please, don't make trouble for me. You are my friend. I said, yes, <laughs> I am your friend. But now I am not your friend. <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow, in the first meeting, uh, they segregated women and men. They refused. We sit with them. Uh, but second time, uh, they recognize us. And they put for us uh, uh, chairs. And they prepare in the, in the side of the hall which is okay for us, for the first time and second time. Then for two years, since uh, 2012, until the end of uh, uh, and two, two years and a half, until uh, the um, 2015, uh, um, uh, May, we start attending all the meetings. Every meeting they had, if we, we have a group of 50 ladies, we cannot go all the time, all of us, so uh, we make like schedule. Some ladies will go, you know, each month we'll go some ladies and uh, they will attend and they will participate. And we ask them, actually, I asked the minister one time that if we can join the committees, because they have uh, 13 different committees about the um, uh, structure for the city. And they said, uh, you cannot because you didn't start from the beginning of the year. <laughs> we said, okay, no problem. At least we give a message. So anyhow, after that, we discovered that they like our appearance because there is not too much people interesting to attend the meetings. <laughs> <laughs> and we are making uh, customers for them <laughs> because now we are attending other people coming mm -hmm. and they want to see how come ladies will, you know, participate. So, uh, and uh, each time they have a program or uh, they have visitors from uh, out of the country, they will invite us. <laughs> and they said, you are not legally um, uh, uh, allowed, but it's okay. You're, you're making our situation more uh, valuable. And I don't know if this is because they want a nice picture in front of, uh, you know, the media or uh, the opposite. I don't know what, <laughs> what is the, in the back of it. <laughs> so anyhow, until now, uh, we are uh, working with them. We make one project with them, actually, and uh, when they have uh, workshops for the citizen, they will call us, and, uh, and then we discovered that only Jeddah and uh, the municipality of Jeddah allowed uh, the ladies to enter uh, the meetings, and uh, I think that because we are insisting, and we still, we, we didn't give up from the first time and second time and third time. No, we are insisting, and there is no law against it. The thing is we have to make awareness about the laws and how to use the law for uh, our uh, goals. And that's what we learn. 
actually. Like when we went to, uh, uh, in 2011, to ask to join the election and take our license, uh, in that time, we know uh, we didn't. We go like 15 ladies together, and uh, they said uh, you will be arrested. When we ar arrived there, they said you will be arrested. We said why we will be arrested? We didn't ask for anything. We asked for the license. You don't want to give us? It's okay, but at least we make a statement. They said no. You know that groups of 15 is against the law. The group of three is not against the law. We said okay, we can make five groups. <laughs> And so we know in that time, what is, the, what is the law? So the law, we don't have to carry any uh, banner, banner <laughs> or to make group of uh, more than three. So if we know the law, we will follow it and do what we can. So it's, it, it makes our uh, goals is, uh, executed easier, more easier. Okay. <laughs> so uh, until now, we have the communication. And I hope that, of course, now all the ladies <laughs> entering all the municipalities. <laughs> I just need to say that uh, that Jeddah, uh, Jeddah's uh, group, uh, Baladi, has been uh, more active than the rest of, uh, or, or it has been active in a different way, mm -hmm. and uh, also it ha it has u uh, made use of um, of the openness that uh, Jeddah has, as well as uh, the many uh, uh, volunteer groups that. Uh, uh, were formed throughout the years, since actually 2004, with Muwatana, for example, or with the floods, with um, many other... Uh, uh, Volunteering. Right. And, and also they have, they have some centers, like uh, uh, such as Marrakez Al Ahya, center, mm -hmm. uh, neighborhood, uh, neighborhood centers. Mm -hmm. It's a thing that you don't find in other, other mm -hmm. uh, cities in Saudi Arabia that allowed for some public uh, space. Um, well, why don't anyway, we bring in um, Rasha then, who was yeah, elected Russia. from Jeddah and uh, actually was involved, I think, with Mawatana uh, as yes. well before, and also uh, with sitting in on the municipal councils. Um, Rasha, can you can you hear us? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? Uh, let's see. Is it right? Can you speak again? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah that's much better. First, uh, Rasha, congratulations on your election. Thank you. <laughs> Can you tell us then, uh, I'm sure everyone here is really interested to hear about what it was like to, to run a campaign. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I mean, what was your um, strategy in going forward and what were some of the challenges that you faced? Uh, first of all, thank you for hosting me on this. But um, if, if you want to talk about, uh, actually, the whole campaigning came as a coincidence. Um, I, I, two years ago, uh, everybody thought that I should run for office and I should go to the municipality elections, and I was preparing myself for this. But then, uh, at the beginning of the year, I lost two of my families, and after that, I decided that maybe it was not the right time to go into elections. Uh, understanding the current situation and how awareness is very low among society about uh, civic engagement and the role of the council, and people are not aware even about the dates of the elections, I thought that it would be a big risk for me to enter the elections. Especially uh, if you look at the map of the voter, you would understand that um, voters are, are dominated by either businessmen or some conservative groups. So it was, it was, as I said, it was risk even to enter uh, the elections without bringing your voters with you. But then, uh, before uh, the, the time of registering all voters, everybody around me pushed me and they said, Russia, we've been working for this for so long, and uh, you should go to elections. You're representing youth, you're representing women. And besides, I have the background uh, by being on the ground uh, in different civil society groups. As they mentioned, the first group we were in was Muatana. And Muatana, when we started working with the council, also it came as a coincidence. We were working for the development of Jeddah. We issued the first shadow report about the Corniche. And at that time, we didn't have in mind, it's, uh, the only thing we had in mind was how to work hard for the development of Jeddah. So when we started working with Dr. Tariq Fadah at that time, uh, it was the only channel for us as citizens to represent our opinion and uh, uh, the way we, think, we see things happen in the Corniche. At the same time, uh, we had a lobbyist with us 
we used to go in every meeting with the men and to lobby for us to be in the council. And he was a young man at that time, his name is Ahmed Sabri. He used to go in every meeting, even if the meeting with the citizens was like 10 people or 20, he used to lobby for us and said, you should open a, a day for women to attend the meetings. Anyhow, uh, based on, on all these uh, experiences we had, everybody pushed me and said Russia should have go to it. So I, I, I thought and I, I just prayed and I said, okay, maybe I'll just work with what I have because I have very limited tools. One of the tools, we, we, we didn't have enough voters. Yani most of the voters entered in the last week of the registration period. And that's why we thought it was a risk for us even to have a seat in the council. Uh, there was so many obstacles for people to register uh, based on their zone and, and identifying their location and houses and, and so on. Uh, another thing, the low awareness with the community. The, the minister felt that they did an amazing awareness campaign, but I always tell them that you did an amazing marketing campaign. Especially the marketing campaign started maybe two weeks before the registration. Uh, people were on vacation, uh, even when the registration started, we had an advantage of, of uh, downgrading the age of uh, three, so people with 18 years old can register, but most of the students were busy by registering their schedules in universities. So, I, as I said, also timings was very difficult for them to go and register. And uh, also the locations of the registration center, especially for limited resources and limited transportation uh, to, to go to these centers, it was very difficult. Uh, after that, after we finished the registration, the, the, we didn't get uh, the data of the voters also. That was another obstacle we had. Uh, the permission was issued in the same day the campaign started. And we received the permission late. I mean, maybe this was like a trial error uh, thing with the ministry, but we had to put in mind that with this, like I had to come every day with a new strategy. I was working on two strategies. The first strategy was to work on a very strong campaign to just attract the attention of the public and let them know that uh, we're living, you know, the, the history and we are going through campaigning and, and, and rallies. I mean, I attended the... Uh, presidential election in 2008 in the U.S. and I just I, I I was thrilled how people they felt that they had a say in decision making and uh, youth were excited. Um, people were going to to volunteer from different even the minorities. So I wanted people to feel the same atmosphere and to feel how it is important to have a say. Alhamdulillah, actually we did. We had a campaign and we were working hand in hand with different sectors, with different speakers, different activists to make sure that uh, people really understand the concept of elections. And that's why even I received like thousand emails and, and hundreds of calls, people they say, Rasha, we want to vote for you. And they say, if you're not registered, you cannot vote. And then they would regret that they did not vote. Uh, sorry, they did not register before, uh, before the elections. Uh, so this, this was one level. The second level was trying to get the vote. Now, with all these activities, we made an echo where some businessmen and some other voters started to hear about us. I mean, like for me, myself, I'm a businesswoman and uh, I have also a consultancy, I have an event management, and I'm an active in society. But the ratio of voters, as I said, are mostly businessmen who have a very diplomatic relations with other top businessmen who were in my district. My district was very strong. It has, like, on the top of the list, one of the wealthiest uh, businessmen in, 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 in North Jeddah. And at the same time, I had um, uh, some conservative groups who are very also well known in the area. So it was a challenge for me, how, how I'm going to go with all this. And I, my voters, I'm sorry, my supporters are not my voters. You have to, to just differentiate between the supporters and the voters. So I had to dig in and I had to send supporters to the voters to try to get me the votes, especially when the voters already gave their words to other candidates because it was out of... Um, you know, they have the social connections and they are in something we call Diwania, where men, they sit together and they have their business deals. So it was very difficult. We got the votes, but I want to tell you that for us as women, the one vote we got equal 10 votes uh, of, of, of uh, yeah, any men. It, it, was, it, it was very difficult. Can, yes. you, can you tell us, uh, Rasha, since you, you did spend time sitting on the councils, what you think you can do? 
by, by you know, joining the municipal councils, there's a strong argument that the councils don't have any power. Uh, you've actually spent time seeing what they do. Uh, can you tell us what your goals are to, to use your election to you know, advance the interests of women or, or of your community more generally? You know, they always say that the council has no, no authority, but they have a role. Maybe they have limited authority, but they have a role. And if we can really uh, use that role wisely, I think we can do a lot. I mean, we worked so hard as civil society groups, and we did a lot. When we didn't have an umbrella, we didn't have a legitimate umbrella, we didn't have resources, we didn't have manpower. Sometimes a lot of our programs being canceled by uh, the ministries or go government entities because we don't have, as I said, a legitimate umbrella. And we still, we carried on, and we've been working in different fields. So imagine now if you have even this, what you're saying, the limited authority. So I'm sure you can do a lot. I mean, I recall that I've, 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 I've been in a relationship with lots of the um, uh, 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 previous council members. And some of them, they're from a different school of thought. And I have really major differences with them. But I admire the way they're working with their neighborhoods. Uh, even if they're very conservative or from a different school of thought, as I said. Uh, sometimes one member can do a lot in the neighborhood. So I, I do I do believe if you have the will, you can you can change a lot. Especially now with this new um, structure of the council and its report directly to the minister and the way the, the decision making process is different than uh, the previous council, I think there is a big opportunity to make a change. Great, thank you so much. Um, let me turn right now to um, Aziza uh, Youssef. Um, Aziza, you've been uh, very active in, in women's rights campaigns. As I mentioned, you've been a leader in the driving campaign. Um, you're supportive of the candidates, but you, you chose to boycott the elections. So can you give your perspective of, of why, why you chose to do that? Okay, before I start explaining why I boycott uh, the election, uh, I would like to congratulate uh, Baladi campaign and uh, I would like to say that I respect all the ladies. They worked so hard, and they uh, won something really special. And I think uh, the way I look at it, um, I really don't care about what's the, what is the municipal uh, do or don't do. I care this thing change the relationship between citizen and the government. I think this is uh, starting to uh, start a new era, whereas the citizen will ask for something and they will grant it. Uh, I think they are the first one who did that. Uh, I think their way of doing it should be taught in universities in Saudi Arabia and taught to other women. Uh, however, I am boycotting this. It doesn't have to anything to do with, with their work. I hope they don't mi misunderstand that. I am boycotting it because uh, before I go to vote or uh, be a candidate, I want to see a woman as a full citizen uh, to grant her basic uh, rights. Uh, I respect all the ladies and I respect the one who won, but what if one of the ladies decide to travel and uh, her guardian is not there to give her the permission? What if one of the ladies decide to go to a meeting and her driver throw her keys in her face? What if one of the ladies want uh, uh, to attend a, mix, uh, me a meeting with men and her guardian said, no, you cannot do that? With all this restriction in women uh, still there, uh, I think I will not vote, and I will not participate in, uh, in uh, this election. <coughs> uh, I want to say something about the, uh, the campaign of Baladi. I, uh, we did the same thing or something similar for the driving, and uh, we, we were uh, questioned, we were uh, detained in uh, uh, police stations, and. Uh, we be being charged that we are uh, betrayal and we are uh, uh, affecting the, um, uh, the peace of the society. So uh, it doesn't always that if you insist on something, you'll grant it. It depends on uh, however the government see your, your demand and how uh, it, this will affect uh, the, the image of, of uh, the government. Uh, I want to say that Saudi women since the 70s and 60s, they are really very, uh, you know, they, we have PhDs, the first uh, woman in PhD, she granted in 1970, even before the universities opened. Uh, so, it, you know, Saudi women are hard worker. Uh, they uh, can 
be in any position, they can do any work they are, uh, uh, they decide to do. However, there is the guardianship system is putting them, uh, you know, in, in a very awkward place in, in the, the society. So this is the reason I am boycotting. Can you, um, how do you think these, do you think that these different campaigns uh, work together? I mean, in a way, do these different uh, areas of work for, for women um, support each other? Or do yes. you think there is a danger in sort of uh, no, no. cooperating no, at this uh, stage? No, me and uh, Hutun, we are in the same uh, campaign for mm -hmm. driving. She is uh, also <laughs> with us in the driving campaign. And uh, one, uh, I think three or other from Baladi, they are with us. Uh, no, I think we are uh, networking uh, very well, and we are working together very well. But the problem is which is accepted from the government, which is not accepted. I mm -hmm. think that the, the, the Baladi was accepted uh, because the work of the lady and explaining it very well, and because uh, the king announcement. Uh, the king announcement. This is everything come with a decree in our society. If, mm -hmm. if the king have a decree, then then things will. Uh, I I didn't I didn't think you have a big trouble even before the decree. Because no, we did. You we did. Yes. Uh, I, I don't know. You know, yeah. I wasn't following up. But uh, they are always blaming the society is not ready. The society, I, I think the society and the people are ready for any change now. And uh, I think that this election, um, it, it, is, uh, it has a political aspect of it. Uh, uh, the other uh, campaign maybe doesn't have the same political aspect uh, of, of it. You mean the driving campaign? Driving or any uh, guardianship, you know, I, we are in another uh, campaign for removing the guardianship from the the ladies, and I think the interest of the the West in this uh, election and the the way it it will uh, add to uh, the the political uh, position of Saudi Arabia, I think this is uh, help to to uh, sex, uh, for success of this campaign. Okay. Let me let me say something um, to add to what Aziza said. Um, I don't think that the, the situation of the state is clear or, or it is understandable. I don't think that we are talking with a logical relationship here uh, because, I mean, driving is, is ruining the image of Saudi Arabia, mm -hmm. the ban on driving. So why it is still a problem, you just don't understand. So there are unsolved questions. And the, 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 the long list of... Uh, of, of solutions that driving will uh, will bring to society economically, uh, socially, politically, uh, name it. Uh, it, it uh, the benefits are much more than than what, that what I, we're I losing. But there is something illogical in the in the in the situation. And mo our more, you know, our problem, the, the the biggest problem we have is the guardianship system. If if we try to. Uh, work in that and look into it in uh, a new perspective for Islam. Uh, removing the guardianship from ladies, it, you know, it's affecting our daily life, you know, in, in custody issues for the children, in the divorce cases, in the uh, abused uh, women. All of this goes uh, under the guardianship. A woman cannot choose even her wife, uh, her husband. You know, we have uh, cases in, in the we have 46 cases in the courts that uh, the family wants to separate the husband and wife because they are not from the same tribe, because one of their tribal and one is non-tribal. This is ridiculous. This is affecting the, the women's life daily. Mm -hmm. So before I see this change, you know, I will not elect. <laughs> okay, thank you. Well, I have many questions, but I know we have a lot of people uh, in the audience uh, that have questions as well. So let me open it up uh, to the audience. Um, if I can just ask you two things. One, if you will state your name and if you have an affiliation. And also, if you can uh, respect uh, the women here who came, some of them came from Saudi Arabia, obviously, by actually asking them a question. So um, please, if we have somebody here. I'm gonna go in the back. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, my name is Kambi Butt. Uh, I'm with the Pakistani Spectator. And I remember, uh, my question is first, let me ask you a question that how come Saudi guys, they don't eat pork, but they do rest of the anything they could do. Uh, how come they are able to not treat you very well? And uh, 
the story I was telling you in 1985 when I came to University of Toledo, Ohio, uh, a Pakistani student pointed toward a Saudi guy and said he gave a new car to a white woman. Oh, so this is their lifestyle. So I hope you, and if you see at uh, Facebook, you get the impression that Saudi regime is, doing, is responsible for 90% of the terrorism in, in the world through, through Madrasa. And why didn't Bush do family do anything? Because Bandar Abbas was literally in bed with Bush family. But I met your current ambassador, like uh, I think a couple of months ago here. He looks more intellectual. He is not a PR guy. So okay. how, who is stopping America to take any action against right. Saudi royal family for keeping Saudi Arabia in the last century? Okay, Thanks. if we could keep the questions to the subject at hand. But I think generally he does raise an issue about um, uh, cultural issues within Saudi Arabia and uh, conservatism. Um, how does that, the society, um, and also maybe the influence within the state affect the push for women's rights in the kingdom? Yeah, I, I take it. Uh, are we going to do one by one or take a group of four, uh, four, um, four questions? Uh, if you want to go ahead and answer okay, that, I'll, and then I'll, I'll take a question. few more. Although it's it's a bit irrelevant, not not totally irrelevant, but it is. Um, it will take us in, into another domain, <laughs> other than the, uh, the elections. Um, we are we are Saudi uh, Saudi citizens. We recognize that we have a problem of um, of um, that we have uh, a hand or a relationship to the, um, some of the terrorism, uh, terrorist idea, ideologies. Huh? Uh, some of the ideologies, they are based on, on some teachings that uh, we are suffering from uh, in the kingdom. Uh, we, rec we, we recognize that, and actually Saudis, uh, Saudis themselves, they are working very hard within the system and internally in the media and in uh, publicly speaking against um, all of uh, those who represent this type of ideology, which we, we see in schools and in uh, um, whether it's abroad or, or inside. Uh, and it is affecting part of the guardianship problem is actually related to the misinterpretation of Islam or the one, one single kind of school yeah. that is interpret uh, that is monopoling, uh, monopoly monopolizing the interpretation of everything uh, related to society and to and to women I, I so here that. here um, we uh, the, 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 the the answer in brief is that we recognize that and we're working hard to to, uh, to to stand against it as well and the state now it is recognizing starting not starting but it is recognizing you start yesterday they and uh, Saudi Arabia announced the war against terror with 34 uh, uh, Islamic State. So I hope we are going into more active role in eliminating <coughs> terrorist uh, ideologies. I, I, yeah. uh, I have something to add. I refuse to uh, blame only the fundamentalist and the um, religion uh, and the whatever Islamic uh, heritage uh, for terrorism. You know, this been here for 1,400 uh, years, this, this ideology. Why it comes just now? There is a political part of the terrorism that we have to understand it. It's not just to blame it for the Quran or the Hadith or Ibn Taymiyyah or so. There is a political problem in the Middle East. And it's not coming only from Saudi Arabia. It's in the Middle East, if you don't have a place that's stable, and you know you, you cannot just say that this guy because he's a fundamentalist he go to bomb himself. <coughs> this is there is a lot. Uh, th th this is not the place to discuss this, but there is a political issues concern this, and all the countries are involved, even the Western countries. I'm sorry to say that involved in uh, producing uh, terrorism. Thank you. Um, let's take a few questions then at once since we don't have as much time. Um, anyone else have questions? All right, we have uh, one in the front here. Um, sorry. In that way, sorry. Yeah, in the, in the back. Uh, my name is Hazar Faqi. I'm a Saudi journalist, economist. I would like you to ask you to and welcome and all of you ladies to, to Washington, D.C. I've been to Saudi Arabia three weeks ago when I was talking to 
my sources there and they say Saudi society are heading to a new era. One of the things that says the Sa there is a turning point for a Saudi woman and they are gonna open the borders for a journalist without any barriers. Uh, also the guardians uh, mentioned that November 11, um, you as a Saudi, as a figures in a Saudi woman society, do you, have you heard about this? Have you had any discussion about that? About what, I'm sorry. Um, about, they said we are going, going to empower Saudi women more, okay. more than that. Okay. That is a rumor. An initiative coming from the government. Yeah. Yes. There is a rumor that's that government something coming in January, so we're waiting. Okay, <laughs> let's, let's accept a couple more questions uh, towards the back. Um, <laughs> maybe one right here, uh, Samia. Uh, uh, my name is Matar, Brahim Matar, former MP from Bahrain. Um, 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 I remember when I, I was in Kuwait, um, when the government was pushing for the women's rights, uh, many religious groups were against it. Some, and the, uh, the religious there were divided, the Muslim Brotherhood, the Salafists, the Shia were divided about it. When, to, uh, when, uh, when the case was there in Bahrain in 2002, uh, all groups, all religious groups were supporting the women's right. So do you think, uh, let me uh, uh, follow my question to Aziza, do you think that it is really about religion where you'll find the same religious group having different uh, opinion uh, from different countries? So what can, can you uh, expect to see, for example, the religious group in Saudi Arabia changing their position with the time? Uh, I, I uh, hold on just one second. We're gonna take one more question and then we'll have uh, different ones answered. Maybe in the front. Um, so as is evident by all the like amazing campaigns that you've all talked about today, um, all three of you, in fact, all four of you are incredibly active in um, society in Saudi Arabia. And so I was just sort of curious to learn more about how you became initially involved in activism and how sort of growing up that idea of becoming, being active and participating in your society um, was planted and what sort of inspired you to become such active. Okay, great, thank you for your question. So um, we have three questions here. Uh, let me t start with the last one on motivation and um, Rasha, are you still with us? Rasha? Okay, I thought maybe since she's been uh, active since she was 15, she yeah. could. Oh, are you still there? Okay, hold on one second. Um, there was a question, Rasha, about uh, what motivated you, and I know that you started very young. So can you can you tell us what motivated you to become involved? Are you there, Rasha? One second, I think she's connecting. Maybe while she's connecting, we can go on to, uh, to one of the. Sorry. Rasha, are you there? Hi, did you hear? Okay, did you hear no. the question? Can yes. you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay, did you hear the question about uh, what motivated so you to get involved um, in activism? Um, well, I started as a volunteer at a young age, and uh, just one thing led to another. As I said, I, I was a member and lots of uh, Islamic societies. Actually, um, I, I always heard about the relief organization. It started at Actually, in 1995, uh, when we had to help lots of uh, relief efforts in Bosnia and, and other European countries. And then from there, I was a member in Elwami, World Assembly of Muslim Youth. And, and then from there, I started working with the orphans in a bird society. And uh, as I said, one thing led to another. After working with all these organizations, uh, me and lots of other youth members, we discovered that um, these organizations does not fulfill our uh, or our needs, so we started to create our own uh, groups. Of course, we, we don't have uh, a system for NGOs uh, yet in Saudi Arabia, so we had to work without, within our groups, and we started to work in different uh, development files, advocating for these files, with uh, lots of stakeholders, sometimes government, uh, public sector, um, private sector. Um, one, of, one of the major things we did was in the flood in 2009, 
also it was with Muatana Civil Society Group. And then from 2009 uh, till 2011, we had the second flood. And from there, we started uh, one of the finest and, and, and best uh, uh, training program was for community leaders for disaster relief management, uh, funded by King Khalid Foundation. And then in 2011, uh, after the flood happened, and it was uh, the second turn for the elections, we decided that we were on the ground and we should have a youth candidate in the election. So we founded something called Shabab Jidda to Al Majlis Al Baladi. And uh, also, it, it was a reflection after lots of the youth groups boycotted the um, elections because they thought that the council has no authority and so on. Uh, in, in two weeks, we started Shabab Jidda to Al Majlis Al Baladi. And then suddenly we discovered that another group started in Riyadh called Shabab Al Riyadh to Al Majlis Al Baladi. And then in Tabuk, in Medina, Shabab al Medina to al Majlis al Baladi, Shabab Tabuk to al Majlis al Baladi. And uh, from there, we started working with the council. And then after that, we created another group called Jidda Watch. So we were like the watchdogs for the council. Also, we issued um, uh, another shadow report for the municipality. And that's great. Thank you. Uh, she asked, What inspiring you? Uh, I originally from Makkah al Mukarrama, and Makkah al Mukarrama is a holy uh, city for Muslims. And actually, my family business, we are Mutawif. Mutawif, who is uh, the uh, religious um, uh, tourism guy, like here. <laughs> uh, if you have company for tourism, that will be the Mutawif. So, and it's in heritage, it's not, they cannot buy it. It's going from my, the grandfather to the children and until come to us. So in, uh, in Hajj time and Umrah time, that when the pilgrim visit Saudi Arabia in these two cities, uh, these people, the Mutawif, they are s giving their services to the pilgrims. So I remember when I am a child, my father, we, he, we used to serve like 1,500 in one camp. And uh, maybe a third of them, they don't have money. They want to come to Hajj, but they cannot afford it. So they come without paying anything, only the thing they want. So the thing is, in the West region, because of Mecca and Medina, we have this, the common sense and the uh, uh, an, um, uh, wearing about volunteer work, helping others. Even if you go in that cities and uh, uh, you will find the people who sell in the shops, they maybe he knows like seven or eight language because of all the people coming from all around the world and they are visiting these cities. And sometimes I remember when I was young, this pe some of these people, if they don't, if, if, if the hotel is not enough for them, they will, um, we're inviting them in our home. So uh, actually we raised an open, an open society and we accept the differences between others. And even we have to be polite to them, even if there are differences, even if they come from different ideology of Islam. So uh, I think this is what inspired me. If we can uh, help uh, the people from outside, why we cannot help ourselves and uh, give a better service to our community and the women. <laughs> Thank you. I, I think we had two more questions. Um, uh, Aziza, one was uh, directed at you, I think, to answer the question about the different positions of Islamic uh, societies or Islamic groups or movements in different states and how you explain that. Okay, uh, uh, we, cannot have, we cannot have a homogeneous society uh, with, the, with the religion. Of, of course, in any society, even in the West, you will find uh, different opinion and you will find different uh, perspective. And uh, it's not the goal to have a homogeneous uh, opinion about uh, in a religious uh, issue. And the, the perfect uh, way to do the, uh, the um, uh, decision making is to separate uh, the, the, the religion from the decision making. The decision making should uh, concern about the, ho the, the, the citizen. It doesn't matter what uh, are they Shia, Sunnah, or conservative, or liberal. It doesn't matter, and uh, the, the 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 government should look to their citizen as uh, human, uh, you know, um, a whole. You know, not differentiate 
uh, and not to choose the, the laws according to either the minority or majority or whoever. It's, it should choose their uh, laws to serve a citizen. And as a Saudi, I, I refuse to uh, enter or accept this division and say there is a fundamentalist and there is a liberal and they are fighting. So because of this, we have to do this or to do that. They can fight. It's OK. Maybe it's healthy to fight and find a new understanding of religion or whatever. But this should not affect the government in taking their decision. And to development the, 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 the citizen or the uh, women or children, uh, the, the laws affecting women and children. This is, I think, um, something uh, we, we passed it in, in, uh, you know, in the understanding of this. Maybe this is we will accept it 30 years ago. Now, all this, the citizens, they believe they are full citizen, they have to have their full rights, and the, 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 you will never have a homogeneous uh, society where all people believe the same thing or all people will take the same stand in, in, in anything. But it is the role of the government to treat their citizen as equal. Thank you. So I think uh, we had one more question, which might be a great question to end. Sorry, just not. Sorry, the last question? Yeah, exactly. Our last question was about um, if there, there are kind of discussions maybe about a big change coming in Saudi Arabia uh, and broadly in society, but also towards women, uh, maybe a tahawul al watani. Um, do you want to address, maybe all of you can talk about the current environment. We know that, for instance, the women were given the right uh, to vote in the municipal elections under King Abdullah. Um, how do you feel about the current political environment, and is it a, a positive one for both uh, women's empowerment and for these broader broader issues that Aziza discussed. Okay. Uh, yeah, um, it's a good point that you raised uh, the, the question about what is go the, the changes that are um, occurring in Saudi. In fact, um, the, the story of uh, the project of um, uh, national uh, transformation has just uh, been released uh, in the last week. Uh, I was invited to it uh, to attend yesterday, uh, and then I found out that there are about 300 people who are invited for, um, from, from different backgrounds to meet with Prince Mohammed bin Salman. Uh, it's, it's an invitation by the office of uh, Prince Mohammed bin Salman, uh, who was actually uh, meeting with, uh, uh, no, he was actually uh, presenting uh, a new uh, program or a new plan uh, that he wanted to release to uh, to the people, to the well, uh, academics or different uh, uh, um, um, peoples that he, he consider as maybe elites of some kind, um, to meet also with the ministers. Um, so there was a platform, um, a type of uh, structure that was very interesting. Uh, there was no barriers, of course, and uh, every uh, group would meet uh, and discuss uh, one. One ministry, uh, education, uh, and health, and uh, uh, business were one of uh, were, were the main themes that were discussed. And there were uh, what has come out from that from the meeting um, shows that there is a lot uh, that's going to be changed. Uh, the budget system is going to be changed. The way in which to ministers are uh, promises are going to be uh, different. They there are to be accounted for what uh, w their promises. They are not going to be given budget on uh, uh, anonymously that they will. So there were very uh, a long list of hopeful uh, decisions that seem to be um, there is uh, going to. Social. Uh, there is nothing uh, about the social uh, uh, It's more uh, about issues. education, a lot, about, uh, okay. uh, a lot of things yeah. about terrorism and about uh, extremism uh, curricula, uh, as well as um, when it comes to education, education and social issues are just, um, they, they don't, uh, they're not separate. Um, we didn't see anything uh, specific about, about so, social affairs or, or women changes. Oh, woman. but rights, there was rights in general, there is nothing about rights came up well, with that. I, I disagree with this because I don't. Can I interrupt? Okay. Uh, just let me finish this uh, point. Russia attended yesterday. Oh, she attended. Yeah, she attended yesterday. Yeah, okay. I know because I was invited to. Uh, yeah. Um, Go ahead, Rasha. I'm sorry, but uh, uh, if you want to finish, then I'll continue. Just because I'll. The, 
sounds but give you a glimpse of what happened yesterday in, in the workshop. Uh, after uh, we are a political or a government official who would who would speak loudly about issues n never been uh, never been mentioned before. Like for example, uh, he spoke about the uh, economic situation. Uh, he spoke about for the first time that we don't have entertainment channels here in Saudi. Uh, he spoke about social justice, and even in the workshops, uh, the workshops were divided by themes or by sectors, and like in e every participant uh, had to choose three sectors, so we were uh, roving between one sector to another to just give insights, and we had some officials from the ministries who would come and give us the current situation, and from, from there we can just uh, put our assumptions or our KPIs, based on the KPIs that the government uh, put them received from the ministries. So, so as I said, social justice was one of a very important factor. Mm -hmm. uh, the second one was uh, entertainment, uh, urban development, planning, infrastructure, everything. Mm -hmm. So uh, what we liked really all from this workshop is that it was very uh, transparent. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's good. Uh, it's a hopeful. It's a hopeful uh, plan that we really look forward to see what are the details of it. Mm -hmm. That's very good. Great. Well, maybe um, we're, we're about out of, we're out of time, in fact, but, but maybe I just give one minute for, for each of you if you have one last thing you would like to add um, before we close today. Um, uh, go ahead. Uh, let me start actually with uh, Rasha. Um, we, we're very hopeful for the future. Uh, we think it's a new era, not only because of the council and the municipality council itself, but the way people reacted to elections and how people are motivated for the change and they really want to have a say in everything happening here. Uh, we think it's a new era also for women, for, for youth uh, to participate in, in uh, as I said, every decision-making process. Uh, we just need to be aligned. Uh, we need to make sure that uh, we don't give chances to uh, um, terror terrorism or any other uh, uh, groups who want to really differentiate between what, 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 what we want to develop and we don't want anybody to take us backward actually. Because even now in the council, just I didn't start meeting yet and I'm still receiving some insight from some people who want to take us backward. So I think we should just focus on the goal and move forward and be aligned with all the society groups. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Naila, you want to Go ahead from that end, Naila. Uh, Dr. Naila, sorry. Uh, I just want to mention that I believe that uh, Islam has been uh, good for women, give her rights that not given in other religions, religious, and uh, uh, I believe that in Saudi Arabia, not all the people there uh, terrorist or. Uh, uh, they are uh, uh, bad guardians. There are some people who is uh, like our families. They support us to be in this situation, and they support their daughters, and uh, they believe that women power is better than <laughs> men power, <laughs> and they think that uh, we can do the thing. They cannot do it. Uh, so um, I, I just want to, to tell the media, the West media, the women in Saudi Arabia, they are not helpless or hopeless. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Aziza Youssef. I just hope to see Saudi women full citizen in every aspect of her life. And, uh, and I hope to see the guardianship uh, removed from her. Thank That's you. Dr. Um, uh, I would uh, just reflect a bit about uh, on, on the elections again. Um, I would see that uh, I could say that the the elections have showed us uh, uh, a side of society that we haven't seen before. Uh, if we say that um, as, uh, in answering, for example, to questions of readiness and what is uh, who is making the decision, society or or the state, uh, here we uh, we get to a confusing uh, answer, uh, but very helpful and very. Uh, Delighting um, because 
at a certain stage, we were very happy to have 30 women running for candidacy when, when we started our campaign, our, our workshops. And then we, when we started the, the workshops of uh, candidates in, uh, uh, in August, we were very excited to have 50 and then to have 150. That was a kind of what, uh, unheard of before. And to come, uh, to, to end up with 1,770 uh, women uh, and only having 100 uh, withdrawing is just um, uh, unthought of. And it's not only that, it's, we're not talking about women who are city women, urban women, we're talking about women of the uh, villages from very unknown backgrounds from the village, from the rural areas coming forward and deciding to stand for elections, not only against her uh, traditional society, but even against her parents, against uh, the, the one from Mecca, against her uncle. It's just amazing stories are starting to, to unfold. Here, uh, what has modified, uh, the question was about how motivated us the, quest, the, the, the big question is how, what motivated all these candidates to, to go, female candidates to go and register, bearing in mind all the obstacles, that is a long list. Uh, Russia has mentioned few of them. It's endless, endless starting from registration up, uh, up to registering as a, as a candidate and then going to, into campaigns. All of that is just showing us that uh, um, something uh, that the society is actually changing completely. Uh, women are recognizing that they are starting to have a right that they, they were denied before and that they are not going to let down, let uh, out of hands, and that they are actually in the political system, social system, the local system, and nobody is going to take us back again. Thank you. I think it's hard to, I, I work on a lot of different issues on the Middle East and it's rare that you get a panel these days that can end so optimistically and forward looking. So I wanna thank um, all of our panelists um, for, for coming here with us and, and sharing really your stories and your experience. Um, and we are, we are thrilled to have you, so thank you.